Hello, this is Dean Takahashi. I'm the lead writer for GamesBeat at VentureBeat. I also happen to be a science fiction fan. Uh, my sci-fi book club recently read uh, The Peripheral by William Gibson, and it's an interesting take on uh, on the metaverse, or what uh, I guess Gibson would call cyberspace instead. Um, and I also had a chance then to uh, uh, talk to the cast and cr uh, creators of the Amazon TV show uh, based on The Peripheral, and uh, that's what follows here. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, I am curious what you think about, I guess, uh, nerdy and complicated science fiction stories uh, uh, getting mainstream now. It um, feels like it to me. Um, I hope so. You mm -hmm. know, um, I mean, look, there's uh, nothing wrong with being a nerd, right? I mean, I wish there were more nerds. I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a way of saying people who are you know, thinking deeply about the world and technology and, you know, implications of different, you know, technologies on humanity and, and just kind of uh, paying attention. And to me, that's great. And I think the other thing is um, science fiction and these, you know, ostensibly complex stories are getting less and less complex for everybody to fathom mm -hmm. because the future yeah. is here, right? It's like, the idea of a pandemic uh, would have blown our minds uh, a couple of years back. And now it's something that we've literally had to adjust to in our daily lives. And the yeah. idea of technologies as, you know, looming in the abstract in the future, well, you know, they're becoming uh, real at an accelerating rate. So I think we're all getting used to mm. the idea that um, science fiction is less fiction and more science and fact and here right now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I also read this book and I, I thought it was, you know, uh, hard to follow, follow sometimes, but um, it, it feels like, like, just like with Westworld, there's, there's kind of a game in trying to catch on to what's going on, I guess, and that, you know, you're just sort of dropped into the middle of, middle of it, and then you have to figure out, um, and it feels like maybe these kinds of audiences like doing that, I guess. Um, it, it's not unlike a video game when you're playing it, right? Mm -hmm. Like you you have, you know, your controls and you log in and you're in a world and you've got to move and you've got to figure it out on your feet and adapt. And there's not necessarily a large rule book you read first. You mm -hmm. learn by doing it as, as Flynn does in this. And so I think the idea of that kind of exploring of the world because of the popularity of video games and gaming in general that sort of syntax and behavior is also now increasingly encoded in our, um, you know, way of interacting with the universe. And does this make you more worried about the future? <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I don't need that to be worried about the future. <laughs> there are plenty of other reasons, but, you know, uh, the book is not dystopic. I think that's what's interesting, and certainly the show is, and I, th I think that it's it's more what it's doing, which we don't see often. It's not binary. You see, it's more complex than that. That the distant future is not dystopic, but it's also not perfect. It's not utopic either. It's it's somewhere in between the two, and and that sort of patina of complexity is really the hallmark of Gibson's writing, and I feel is represented in the show. And it's one of the reasons I'm so excited about the show is that I feel like it's finally finally getting to see Gibson's vision on the screen. It always feels like it's been compromised in various ways in the past. So um, yeah, so I think one of the things that's so resonant about the show is that it's about Flynn trying to decipher what her future will be. And that's what we're all doing right now. I mean, we know we're at some kind of tipping point. There's no question. Um, and and where, how it's all gonna play out is a great mystery. And that's sort of the mystery of the show. Uh, it's actually kind of lucky because I feel like now the show's coming out, there's already been a couple projects that have really delved into multiverses and the ideas behind it. So I feel like maybe even a year ago, it might have taken a little bit longer for people to kind of piece together what a multiverse is. But mm -hmm. I think because we've kind of had it integrated into kind of pop culture in a lot of ways, um, this goes a little bit further with it and where we're actually kind of jumping into the stubs in the sense that we can see how they can become 
playing grounds for those that have power and money to use it as, uh, you know, in a sense, test groups of, you know, uh, certain people and timelines. So um, it, I, I love the idea of, of stubs of reality, which is when, um, you know, anyone from our current time reaches into the past and, and discusses anything with them, then it changes the entire timeline and it branches off into its own sub. Also, like, I, I think what's really compelling is the twist on time travel in this being that, you know, rather than a person or a physical object traveling from one universe into another, it's, it's basically just the transfer of information. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of fascinating because it's like, if it was ever going to be a possibility, then that's that how. would probably be the way it would be, you know? And obviously William Gibson is kind of the master at that mm -hmm. speculative fiction. Zuckerberg's metaverse is upon us. I, I would say Gibson's work precedes the metaverse. You credit Neil Stevenson with the metaverse and Gibson underneath all of that with cyberspace. Um, yeah. I've been reading Gibson's stuff since I was a kid, and so I think those ideas infected me and all of my work uh, mm -hmm. down the line. So it was an honor to go back and go back to the source, the guy who dreamt all this up. Um, and yeah, I think, I, you know, I think the, the idea of a metaverse is hierarchical and there are ideas of hierarchies in this narrative. But what I think is so interesting about this narrative is, is does consider the idea that there is not a hierarchical, it might be a hierarchical relationship with regards to the future versus the past, but in this world you have two, or in these worlds rather, you've got two, two wholly real worlds, Gary's mm -hmm. character Wilf in one, Chloe's character mm -hmm. <coughs> in the other. And that mm -hmm. argument over which one is the metaverse, right? Which one is the really real world, the authentic world. Gibson's language mm -hmm. for it is that you have the real world, then you have stubs, uh, which mm -hmm. is a lovely term and a lovely okay. set of ideas or rules for it. But yeah, I think I reject the idea of the metaverse because I think it implies a hierarchy and I think it's actually going to be much more complicated than that. Very much, yes. No, I never thought any of the weird shit that I was into when I was a kid would have any relevance for anyone else. And, and all of a sudden... It's kind of the fabric of the universe we live in now, which makes me very concerned about what's coming down the, the pipe. Bill Gibson at one point said, the future's already here, it's just unevenly distributed, unequally mm -hmm. distributed. And I think this is a great, this idea, and I grew up as an English kid bouncing back and forth between American and England, and the, the, you know, fascinated with all the little textual differences between those two worlds, and so, it was a no-brainer looking at this book to explore that idea. You've got Chloe's character who's in a rural America that, and we're watching this play out, is, has been left behind, is being left behind, mm -hmm. technologically, societally, culturally, and gets a chance, very much that Cinderella story, right? Gets a chance to interact with a, wor a world that is apparently much more sophisticated, sleeker, seductive, but when she sort of looks under the hood, discovers both of these worlds are kind of driven by the same primal, ugly things. Yeah. I found out, you know, all of my, I did never imagine that Wilf was quite as handsome as Gary, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that was, that was uh, definitely an improvement upon my imaginings on, on the book. No kind. <laughs> I think it's very hard to read Gibson and not start filling in the blanks. The worlds are so fantastically beautifully realized. But that was left to Vincenzo Natali, Jan Wolf, our production designer, all the wonderful artists who worked on the, the series to sort of bring that to life. <laughs> Do you know what's amazing is that uh, if you'd have brought up stubs and multiverses even a few years ago, it would have just <laughs> over the top of everyone's head. But I think it, it's become a sort of a common understanding. Uh, it used to be just for quantum physicists, and now if you've watched a Marvel film or any cartoon, you're kind of figuring out what multiverses are. Thank mm -hmm. goodness. Common understanding from you went completely I, over my head. I had to explain, <laughs> Vince, Ben Jones had to explain it to me like an hour. Yeah. I had to explain it to me like five <laughs> times. I'm still trying to grasp my head around it, quite frankly. Uh, yeah, yeah. L luckily, exactly, we have people to explain it to us, yes. our small brains. <laughs> I just realized, games, why is that this, I mean, think of the peripheral spin-off game. It's like oh, set no. for VR, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really is. We mm -hmm. are, I'd love exact... to play that game. Oh. Yeah. 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 Games. I mean, yeah, it, it is pretty mind blowing to think that maybe people are seriously thinking about how we're in simulations and maybe not real life as well. Didn't you always and think that? Didn't you always think like there'll be a crack in the sky? The kind of, you know, oh wait, I'm gonna get, you know, the Truman Show esque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is that just my mm. paranoid brain? No, no, me too. Or maybe not. Like, my, my, my dad always said, well, imagine we're just like in a laboratory 
actually. Totally. When they're mad and someone's looking at us and we're, someone will take the lid off and go, oh. Well, yeah. of course, in, in my narcissistic world, of course, it's, I'm the centre of the laboratory. <laughs> 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 of course, I'm not an extra. I am. You are the, right. <laughs> mm -hmm.